שלו נשמע דבורה פגר בת שמואל, לא רק דבורה בת שמואל, אסתר רבחי בת אברהם ולכן מרים בת פאני, מנחם מנדל בן אלחנן. It's interesting that uh, the most holiest place that the Kohen Gadol was able to enter in the year was called the Kodesh HaKodeshim. Only once a year. And if the Kohen wasn't enough strong, enough holy to control his thoughts, one small thought that wasn't correct, on the spot, he died. What was inside the Bet Kodesh HaKodeshim? We had the Aaron. The Aaron is basically the place where we had the tablets, the broken ones, and the, and the complete ones. We had the Sefer Torah, the first Sefer Torah that Moshe Rabbeinu wrote. We had many, many other things. And above all of, the, all of this Aaron, there were the Keruvim. What was the Keruvim? The Keruvim was basically angels with face of Tinok Vetinoket. A child, a baby, a baby boy and a baby girl, that was their face. And they were watching to, to each other. The Keruvim represents the holiest angels because the baby represents something holy, something no avon. And being an angel, it's even above that. And Rabotai, that's called the Keruvim. So the Keruvim is something positive or negative? Positive. The problem is that when Borei Olam punished Adam Arishon, Vaygaresh, how the pasuk writes, I have it over here. Vaygaresh, Hashem et Adam, Hashem, kish out, kick out Adam Arishon from Gan Eden, and then the Torah says, Vayashken mi Kedem le Gan Eden et Keruvim. What he put at the entrance of Gan Eden to block Adam Arishon's enter. Not to let Adam and Chava to come back. He put Keruvim. And if you look over there, says the Mefrashim, what are those Keruvim? Malachi Habala. You know what's Malachi Habala? Believe me, you don't want to know. <laughs> Malachi Habala are the, destruct, the, the, the destructor angels. The ones that are standing for the Rasha'im. The Rabar Minan, Bar Minan, we should never know. They, that they have not even a place in Gehinam. There is a certain place, it's called Kafakela. Basically, it's not even a place. It's in between. No Gan Eden, no Gehinam. The Neshama of these Rashaim are holding in the middle and they are open to get all type of punishments from Malachi Habala. So say, the, so say the Torah, God put up those Malachi Habala at the entrance of Gan Eden to block the entrance. And how do they call them? Keruvim. So decide. Are Keruvim something positive or they are some, something negative? Those Keruvim that have faces of, ch of kids, they're good or bad? And Rabotai, the answer is maybe a very simple answer. But maybe the most simple things we have to talk, we have to talk about it. Rabotai, the kids could be the most beautiful and the most amazing thing ever. And at the same time could be the most terrible manakhe habala that they can be in this world. If we don't know, I mean, if we don't know how to take our kids, how to educate them, how to help them out to grow, but I mean, we can get a result of Malachi Habala by having those kids. And from another hand, if you know how to educate them, you can get into the point that they will be the most holiest angels on earth. You know, there is a Midrash. I think it's also Gemara, I'm not sure. The Midrash writes down, Amisa was kicked out from the land of Israel. But Olam destroyed the Beit HaMikdash. And the people were walking towards Babel. You can imagine. Everybody was destroyed. Seeing the Beit HaMikdash, the Beit HaMikdash burning. Having, I don't know how many, hundreds of thousands of Jews that were killed. And Irmiyahu Navi, the famous prophet that spoke about the destruction, 
It was walking with them, with the people. Walking with them and telling them, you know, being part of the, of the whole situation. Until they get to the border of Israel. And Irmiyahu Navi decides that he had to stop and to go back. To see how he can help to the Jews that stayed in Israel. Rabotei the Midrash writes that this Irmiyahu Navi gets to the border. He's making a U-turn. And all of a sudden, all, all of the people that they were walking with him, they see Irmiyahu leaving, they start to yell at him, Irmiyahu! Don't leave us. What are we going to be without you? We need you at least. You know, we lost the Shekhinah. We lost the Beit HaMikdash. And he started to cry. And here comes the sentence. It says, in Miyawa Navi to the people, ay, ay, ay. If you were crying, these same tears, just a little bit earlier, the whole entire destruction will never happen. The mistake was that they cried not at the right moment. There is a rabbi that I know in Israel that he went that he went to uh, to France and he was in France and he met a very very rich guy in France. They told him, "You see this guy? He's the owner." And they started to show him a whole plaza place in Paris. A guy very, very wealthy. Okay, very nice. After one day or two, they tell the rabbi, Rabbi, this wealthy man wants to meet with you. Private. So what? He wants to help uh, Yeshiva and they donate it? No, no, no. He just wants uh, you know, to ask you some advice. So the rabbi accepted. They were sitting together. And the wealthy man tells the rabbi, Rabbi, I'm ready to give to you. No yeshiva, no nothing. I'm ready to give to you five million dollars. Right away. Even today. If you're going to help me out. The rabbi said, listen, five million dollars sounds acceptable, you know, price for... A, uh, it could be six, but five is also good. But what's the matter? And the man tells him, Rabbi, I have a daughter. And my daughter, she's my only daughter that I have. And this daughter of mine, she's dating out a goy. Rabbi, if you save my daughter, right away, five million dollars go straight to your account. Please, sit down with her, convince her, try to speak with her, save her. The rabbi says, okay, let me try. And he tried to sit down with the girl, very tough, very hard, she was blocked. She didn't want to hear anything. And he tried one way and another way, nothing went out. Rabotai, the rabbi had to go back to Israel. And just before the rabbi takes, takes back the, uh, the flight, calls up his, uh, his uh, wife, and he tells her, Honey, Mabruk, what Mabruk? Mabruk, we got $30 million. Now the wife knows her husband. <laughs> Honey, what do you mean 30, 30 million dollars? What are you talking about? I'm telling you, we got 30 million dollars. The rabbi explained to her, listen honey, I was with this guy, he offered me 5 million. 5 million dollars is ready to pay. For what? To save one daughter that he had. And how many kids do we have? How many kids were able to educate them not to get even involved in this concept of thinking about marrying a daughter, a, a, a goy? That doesn't worth 30 million or more? Say the rabbi, I went back. 
and I started to appreciate, but also I understand the mistake. What is the mistake of this man, Rabotai? What I'm telling you now is something that happened every single day, just yesterday. Just to tell you. Yesterday I was, I met a friend of mine, and he tells me, I don't know what to do. He has somebody in his community here in Miami that he tells me he went to him and he cried to him. He tells him, you must, you must help me out. His daughter is going out with a goy. It's already a year that they're going out. He doesn't know what to do. He's, he's crazy. He's, he's uh, run, running nuts. Rabotai, sometimes we cry too late. We send kids to certain places and then we cry after. So why you send them to that place? No, it's a good place, good education, very nice your education, but where are you putting your child? There was at the time before the war, Rabbi Rabbi Galinsky says, writes down that it was a Jew, that he had a kid, this kid grow and he got to an age of 17, 18. And he had two options. Or to send him to the famous Yeshiva of Ologin, Or to send him to one of the universities in Germany. In Germany. And the guy decided to send him to, to college, to university. Rabotai, the result was already known from before. The guy, only after two years, he came back. And back then was a mo movement of Tchol Haskala. Yeah, coming back and uh, talking against Judaism and being kofrim. That's how the guy came back. And then we cry. And if we were able to cry before. Rabotai, let's open our eyes. Some of you I know, you already sent up your kids. You have already grandkids that are going to college. Think about it. Think about, okay, you want your, your grandson, your son to, to learn uh, in a college? Think, where are you sending them? Today, you cannot say, I have no options, that's my only option. Today, you have college, that are a religious college. So yes, you're going to tell me it's not the same level, you have even better. Put, a, put it in the balance. You want the child to come back to you? Or you want the child, the child to go to another way? That's the Keruvim. The Keruvim are face of kids. Pure kids. But everything is depending where do you put them. If you're going to put them inside the Bet Kodesh HaKodeshim, you're going to put them inside the most holiest place, surrounded by Kedusha, you're going to have holy angels, holy kids. But if you're going to put them at the entrance, in the road, you know, you're going to put them where all the Goyim are sending their kids, you're going to give them the same education. Those kids, Bar Minan, Kabim, Malachi, Habala. Malachi Habala to the family. Rabotai, this is something that we have to yell at it. Even though Baruch Hashem, the Syrian community is sort, sort of protected. Sort of. Not really. But we have so many people that are surrounding us. So many people that we can have and affect them. Rabotai, I'm not kidding. Every single year we're suffering for over 55 to 60% of intermarriage in America. And we said to ourselves, no, but my kids are fine, so I live in a bubble. Habibi, if you live in a bubble, at the end of the day, you're going to get affected. It's a virus. Today we're talking about, a, you know, it's a virus. And the virus at the beginning was in a bubble in China. Who cares? And then all of a sudden, in America, right next to us, don't live in a bubble. Try to think about what are the people that are surrounding me and talk to those people who are saving lives. Because everything depends on the education that you're ready to put. And don't tell me I'm sending you to a Jewish school. Jewish school, you have many types of Jewish school. You have Jewish schools that are reforms that, are, that they're teaching exactly the opposite. Jewish schools that they have nothing, nothing of Judaism. If you send to school, be careful to send to the right school that they're going to educate according to Torah value. And believe me, this child is going to give you only nachat for you and for the whole family. Baruch Amen.